Okay, welcome to the last part of the video. Uh, we're going to build our deck. Um, I'm going to sort our cards by converted mana cost like I did in the other video. And if we go look down here, see we're not doing much of mana. That's okay. Our deck, we're playing control deck, so it's okay. We can start at two mana. You usually only want one or two one mana spells, and they need to be good. Like, you don't want to just play a bad one mana spell like Whole Strength or Merfolk Spy just to play a one mana spell. A mana curve is important, and like it reaches a certain point where if you're like, if I have a bunch of guys at like four or five mana and like nothing to do with the community, you might have to play some uh, mediocre cards um, at other mana costs, but we really don't need to. We have a lot of good cards at two and three and four, so two. So we got mana leak, negate, redirect. War Priest, Alluring Siren, that's six. That pretty much makes up for the one and the two. Um, it's another, oh, and Blinding Mage. Yeah, I think we'll be just fine. <laughs> and Augury Owl. This deck's really good. We're probably not going to be able to play all of our good cards. Like, we did really well. Honestly, like, that accidental Air Servant pick might have been a blessing in disguise, really, because I think if we had taken the Stampede, we probably, we would have had a good pack one, but I think after that we would have been fighting over green cards the rest of the draft and probably not had enough playables, so. But um, I still think if you open a really powerful rare, even if there's good cards of the same color, you should still take it most of the time. But this draft can show you how sometimes there's more than one pathway to a good deck, even if you, and even if you make a mistake, especially early in the draft, you can usually recover from it, so you get enough wiggle room. Um, you're making 40 two picks, if not including the lands. You only need to play like 23 of the cards. So if you make a couple of mistakes, it's important uh, not to get rattled and just to see what you have and make the best out of whatever that is. You still have to play the games too, so it's not like draft is even over now. Okay. I'm going to do this a little different. I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up because I'm a little more sure of the expensive cards I want to play. So I'm going to start with the Triskelion, which was... I feel like I'm saying harping on this too much, but that we really shouldn't have gotten that. So, but we'll take it. We we'll play these air servants and a Sarah Angel. So we got one card at six mana, three cards at five mana, um, which is fine. At four mana, we got four C, four C, Azure Drake, Water Servant, and Armored Ascension. So five. So we got one, three, five. Now we're looking. So we got nine cards in the deck. We're looking for about seven cards here, seven or eight at three mana. Um, Wall of Frost, Palace Guard, two Cloud Elementals, Scroll Thief. Gives us fourteen cards. Um, okay. Yeah, that actually might be it. Um, could play one Tireless Missionaries. So yeah, we didn't quite draft enough three drops, I, I think. It might be the only like weakness in our deck. We have a lot of good two drops, though. So you got Augury Owl, Blinding Mage, Negate, War Priest, Siren, Redirect, and the two mana leaks up here give us 22 cards. Um, this is a kind of deck that could play 18 land. Like, 17 is your base for like pretty much every draft format, you want to play 17 land in an average, like mid-range, like somewhere in between like heavy aggro and heavy control. This deck is on the side of control, but I don't think it's like really major control. And with the two four Cs and the Augury Owl, nah, I don't know where the Augury Owl is, down here somewhere, um, that those three scry effects should help us hit our lands even just on 17. So I think I'm going to play one more card. Pretty much cards. Oh, I forgot about Mighty Leap. Yeah, okay. Mighty Leap's last card. <laughs> My bad. Pardon me for that that error. Um, it's easy to get like what just happened to me. You got to be careful with this interface. It's really easy like to get lost because um, <laughs> in the way the cards are sorted, it's not too obvious sometimes. Um, for cyber cards that are relevant, we have Solemn Offering, Ice Cage. These Silver Coat Lions could be useful against a more aggressive deck. Um, like if a deck's just trying to kill us with like rune claw bears and elite vanguards and stuff, you just bring in the silver coat lines. They make good blockers. They have two power for two. Um, 
Holy Strength would, could come in against decks playing Ice Cage and or Phantom Beast. Um, Merfolk Spy, I don't really like. Some people play it against blue decks just to get one damage in a lot, but even, like, you hit them with one damage, eventually they're going to deal with it or just not care. Um, yeah, Phantom Beast probably good against green decks. Uh, green decks don't have a lot of target abilities, so. And this Negate would come in against other blue decks. So, we have a few options. Um, we did good. We kept in two colors. Um, if we preview our deck here, can look at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's 9. Sorry, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 blue cards, and 8 white cards. There's 7 white cards in the Triskelion. So yeah, we only need to hit 2 planes for Sarah Angel. So, in theory, we would need 2 islands for Wall of Frost and Water Serpent, which come earlier. Like, you would need to play this on turn 3, you'd need 2 islands and a planes, and then you know, two islands. So we really want to get two islands by turn four, whereas like planes, we can probably wait to turn five or six. And with our scry effects, we should be okay on lands anyway. But I'm going to play uh, ten islands and seven planes because we got. This is kind of um, it's a little hard for me to explain um, how this would work, but honestly, just like experience tells me, play ten islands and seven planes and for having drafted this format a lot. But when you're forming your mana base, what you want to do is you look at this and see, okay, do I have about an even split? Like, I definitely have more blue cards than white cards. So if I was going to get stuck on only one color for a while, I would definitely want it to be blue. So we do need the continual planes for the Blinding Mage, though. So it is kind of would be good to have two planes. I don't want to play, like, 12 islands and five planes and only draw one planes a game. But I'd definitely rather draw, be more likely to get some more islands. So it was more even, like we have 15 blue cards and 7 white cards. If it was like uh, 12 and 11 or something, then I'd just play like 9 islands and 8 planes. But, or maybe even, you know, maybe even play more planes and islands. Like, Armored Ascension wants us to have planes. So, like, even though we don't have a ton of white cards, our white cards do want us to have multiple planes, probably. So, 10-7 seems like a good split here. You can see here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 islands, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 planes. You can preview the deck one more time just to make sure. 10 islands, 7 planes. So, this is a solid deck, uh, for sure. I'd expect to in a four-round draft, I'd probably expect to go at least three and one with this. Um, we don't. We only have our, <laughs> our only rare is this Triskelion that we were fortuitously passed in pack three. So um, you don't have to have good rares to win. It's a misconception a lot of people have. Obviously, that would help if we had a, a Frost Titan or something. Our deck would be better, def of course, but. Um, don't underestimate the power of commons. Uh, Wizards of the Coast designs commons and uncommons such that like they can be drafted and win on, you know. Oh, we have redirect too. Actually, that's a rare as well. That's not really like an amazing rare, but this isn't a card. I I've only played this card once in a, a, ever, <laughs> but it's good in a deck like ours that's a bit weak on removal and has a lot of things that people want to remove. So. Um, seems like a pretty good deck. Uh, gonna submit. And I would export to Magic Workstation if I was gonna play this. So look at that. I don't know where they get this total deck value estimation from. Uh, Triskelion's worth like a dollar, Redirect's worth maybe 50 cents or something. I'm not really sure where, uh, they're getting these prices from. Azure Drake's apparently worth one cent. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know what they're doing here, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay, uh, thank you for watching. Give me feedback. Um, post comments. Next time, it's going to be Scars of Mirrodin, so that's about all. Thank you very much for watching, and happy drafting.